Hi everyone, I am Dr. Sagar Sahu and welcome to Bed Surgery at Ease. Today we will be discussing another chapter in anesthesiology, the alpha 2 agonists. This is a very important chapter because these alpha 2 agonists are very commonly used in the field, specifically the xylazine. You may have heard of about it. Also, you may have heard about the dex medetromidine. Okay. So, we will discuss all those and we will discuss under the heading. Remember introduction, then we will go for the mechanism action, then we will go for the pharmacodynamics, then pharmacokinetics and today we will be discussing also the alpha 2 antagonists. The, alpha, the availability of alpha 2 antagonists is why the alpha 2 agonists are very popular because you can reverse with the alpha 2 agonists. The effect of alpha 2 agonists can be reversed by the reversal agents that is why this is very popular. So, before going to the video, you can subscribe to this channel, okay, there will be a subscribe uh, button down below and also you can follow me in Facebook, Instagram and also Twitter. Okay. In Instagram, I will post notes, okay. I am going to post the anesthesiology notes very soon. So, first the introduction, the agents which are commonly used are xylazine, datomidine, romifidine and medetomidine. You see, you have heard about dex medetomidine, dex medetomidine, okay. You see, medetomidine is a racemic mixture of levo medetomidine and also dextro rotatory or dex medetomidine, okay. When you will extract purely the dextro and it is dex medetomidine, okay, which is more potent than the medetomidine. Okay, so an alpha 2 agonists produce dose dependent sedation, analgesia and muscle reaction. They are very good sedation and also the analgesia is higher than in some like uh, the xylazine have higher analgesia property than opioids also. The alpha 2 and alpha 1 selectivity, you see the medetomidine has the highest selectivity for the alpha 2 receptors while the xylazine has the least which does not uh, which attaches to alpha 1 receptors also along with the alpha 2 receptors. The xylazine is commonly used almost in all species. If you will refer to the Lomb and Jones veterinary anesthesia and analgesia, the xylazine ketamine protocol you can find in almost all species. Okay. And the medetomidine is approved in USA for use in dog and cat. Also, it is commonly used in dog and cat also, but they can be used in other species also. Datomidine and romipidine are basically approved for the horses, use in horses, but uh, there is some articles and some uh, a professor has presented use of romifidine in wild animals. So, okay. These are basically picture. This is a picture of xylazine, the medetomidine. This is uh, I think medetomidine and this one is the sedevate is basically the romifidine. This is detomidine, sorry. This is detomidine. Next. The mechanism of action. This is very important. The alpha 2 receptors are categorized into three sub receptors the alpha 2a, alpha 2b and the alpha 2c. The alpha 1, alpha 2a is present in cerebral cortex okay, which causes sedation and supraspinal analgesia and also it is responsible for the, the bradycardia and the hypotension. This is very profound effect of a alpha 2 agonist. The alpha 2b receptors are present in spinal cords, the dorsal horn of spinal cord which produces the spinal angelsia and when you will administer any alpha 2 agonist, you will find initial vasoconstriction and due to the vasco vasoconstriction, there will be reflex bradycardia. Okay. Now, this effect is mediated by alpha 2 B receptor. The alpha 2 C receptors produces spinal angelsia. It is also present in spinal cord and also you will find hypothermia, okay. hypothermia, reducing body temperature. Okay, next we will go for the pharmacodynamics, the systemic effects. First, the most important one is the cardiovascular effect. The cardiovascular effect of xylazine or you can say alpha 2 agonists, they caused initial hypertension when you will administer, there will be initial hypertension due to which there will be reflex bradycardia, but followed by prolonged hypotension and bradycardia. This is al purely alpha 2 mediated. And the due to bradycardia, you will find reduction in cardiac output. Pulmonary, it has very minimal effect on pulmonary system, though you may find some bradypnea. This is 
reduction in respiration rate. But the arterial pH and P partial fraction of oxygen and carbon dioxide usually it remains unaltered or in some animals you may find slightly reduced, but usually they does not affect the pH, PPO2 and PCO2. The important is in small ruminants like sheep and goat there is a also a research article in sheep. The xylazine or the alpha 2 agonist they cause reduction in partial pressure of oxygen. So, they should be used in caution in case of small ruminant that is sheep and goat. Next other system effects. Next coming to the, the gastrointestinal effects you will find some excess salivation in some animals okay, in some species or some animals you may find excess saliva salivation and also you will find gastrointestinal reflex because of the relaxation of gastroesophageal sphincter. Then you may find vomiting specially you will find vomiting in case of dog and cat okay in some animal nearly about uh, 5 to 20 percent the range 5 to 20 percent of dog and cat may vomit after the administration of alpha 2 agonists and they will, there will be hypermotility of intestine in horses it causes colic. This is a gastrointestinal effect, this the hypermotility effect is due to reduction in acetylene choline secretion, the, the alpha 2 agonists inhibit this secretion. The uh, effect on urogenital system, you will find reduced urine production, uh, sorry the urine production will be increased, it is misprinted, the urine production will be increased, there will be increase in urine production, but the urine will be diluted that is reduced specific gravity because they in the alpha 2 agonists interfere with the secretion of anti diuretic hormone ADH. Okay. So, in case of female animals they increase the myometrial tone and intrauterine pressure and they impair the fetal oxygen delivery in case of pregnancy. Though it is not established the xylazine causes or the alpha 2 agonist causes abortion in animals, but it is avoided in case of pregnancy specially last trimester ok. Remember this point very very important many a times you may find uh, some surgeons might use xylazine in pregnant animals, but it should be avoided, but it is not established that xylazine causes abortion. Next, next the endocrine effects you will find hypoinsulinemia due to the inhibition of beta cells in case of in pancreas ok. And you will find also find hyperglycemia, this effect is more profound in case of xylazine than the metatomidine ok. Then in it is less pronounced in metatomidine, why? You see metatomidine is more uh, selective for alpha 2 while the xylazine has alpha 2 and alpha 1. Due to alpha 1 receptor activity it produces glucose in liver ok, it is stimulates liver to produce glucose while the metatomidine does not have this effect, it only inhibits the beta cells and the there will be hypoinsulinemia due to which there will be hyperglycemia ok, that is why xylazine has alpha 2 and alpha 1 uh, activity, so it is more profound, it has more profound hyperglycemia effect. Then ocular effects, ocular effects you will find mydriasis is dilation of the pupil is known as mydriasis and also you will find a reduction in the intraocular pressure, but it is there is a very important point the animals which vomit just after vomit you will find meiosis that is constriction of a pupil and there will be no change in intraocular pressure in normal condition there will be reduction, but after just after vomiting some animals may vomit there will be won't find any change in intraocular pressure, but there will find there will be meiosis. Next, we will go for the pharmacokinetics. Okay, the common drugs are xylazine, metotomidine, detomidine, and the romipidine. The xylazine and metotomidine they are basically used intramuscularly, and detomidine and romipidine are used intravenously, especially in case of horses. I already told you. You see why they are basically preferred in intramuscular because the uh, I told you when you will give the alpha 2 agonist there will be transient or the initial uh, hyper uh, hyper hypertension and there will be reflex bradycardia. When you will give the uh, drugs the xylazine and metotomidine intramuscularly this effect is minimized. If you will give 
the gelatin and metatomitin intravascularly those effects are very profound so if you will give intramuscular then the effect can be reduced and the data is for dogs mostly but you can take a guess okay the peak effect is achieved in case of gelatin in 15 minute metatomitin 5 minute because it is the most potent most potent alpha 2 agonist then metatomitin in 15 minute promethidine 10 minute the duration of anesthesia or duration of uh, sedation to be very uh, uh, accurate 1 to 2 hour in case of xylazine, metatomidin is same, metatomidin 1 hour and romphidin is the least 40 to 80 minute. And this is the dose rate in case of dog and cat 0.5 to 1 mg per kg body in ruminants 0.1 to 0.2 seed. This in this dose rate the ruminants will become recommend if you want to simply tranquilize simply half this dose rate. Okay. In case of horse it is 1 to 2 mg per kg body. The metatomidin, detomidin and romphidin they are usually given at microgram per kg this is mg per kg milligram per kg okay you should remember this one so in case of dog it is 10 to 20 microgram per kg not to, uh, milligram per kg in case of cat it is 20 to 40 microgram per kg you see if you use dex metatomidin this is dose rate for metatomidin this is simply half because it is twice potent than the metatomidin the detomidin the in, it is used in case of horse and intravenously it is used the dose rate is 5 to 20 microgram per kg romifidin it is also used in horse and you may find some articles regarding its use in wild animals also it is used in horse at the dose rate of 40 to 80 microgram per kg not milligram per kg next now coming to the alpha 2 antagonists alpha 2 antagonists are very very useful in field because the they can reverse the effect of alpha 2 agonist okay that is why the alpha 2 agonists are very popular there are three agents which are basically used as alpha 2 antagonist or the reversal agent for alpha 2 agonist tolazolin eumbin and atipamazole you should know about the selectivity uh, towards alpha 2 and alpha 1 i don't have a data about tolazolin eumbin is 40 is to 1 atipamazole is 8526 to 1 it is very much selective towards alpha 2 that is why it is used for the reversal of metatomidin. I told you metatomidin has a very high affinity towards the alpha 2 receptors rather than alpha 1 receptors while in case of xylazin it is mixed. It has alpha 2 and alpha 1 actions that is why ahumbin and tolazin they are basically used for the reversal of xylazin. This is very important agonist to antagonist ratio because they are not calculated as for mg per kg body weight rather than they are uh, calculated as for the agonist to antagonist ratio. The agonist to antagonist ratio in case of tolazolin is 1 is to 10. What does it mean? If you have given 1 mg of xylazine, then you need 10 mg of the tolazolin to reverse the effect of 1 mg of xylazine. Okay. Similarly, this is a, for a dog, this is for cat. If you have given 10 mg of xylazine, then you need 1 mg of yohimbin to reverse the effect of this 10 mg of xylazine in case of dog while 2 mg uh, if you have given 2 mg then you need 1 mg for reversal in case of cats. Similarly for the atopamazole, the atopamazole is used for the metatomidin or dex metatomidin then the range is for dogs 4 to 6 is to 1 while in case of cat it is 2 to 4 is to 1. Okay. Uh, this varies and another thing I will discuss there is another factor for uh, uh, to take into consideration before administering this agonist antagonist. The root is slow IV for the tolazolin and the yohimbin but the, it is intramuscular for the atopamazole because it may cause overdoses or toxicity. This is AMS, this is tolazolin, this is yohimbin hydrochloride and this is the the famous name is anti sedan okay, the famous name of this uh, atipamazole is anti sedan next this one is very important how to calculate dose i already told you first one is agonist to antagonist ratio and also the initial dose this is a very important time elapse suppose you have given 10 mg of xylazine in case of dog Okay, suppose the half life is 30 minute. Okay, and after 30 minute, you find something unusual and you want to reverse the agent. According to agonist to antagonist ratio, you need 1 mg. But after 30 minute, 
this is half life of xylazine suppose i am not uh, telling exact suppose 30 minute after 30 minute you are administering the antagonist so whether there will be 10 mg in the circulation it may be 5 mg so you may reduce this dose rate or this dose rate should be avoided it should be used less okay remember this one this is very very important why because if you will give overdose there will be excitement in case of the severely excitement and muscle tremor this is central nervous system and this is cardiovascular system effect there will be potent hypotension and also tachycardia and you will find gi effects like salivation and uh, diarrhea this is the overdose of or the toxicity of this alpha 2 antagonist you must avoid so the best is when you are in doubt how to give it is better to underdose the alpha 2 antagonist rather than to overdose okay so this is all about the alpha 2 agonist and the alpha 2 antagonist next we will go for the benzodiazepines also they have the reversal agent we will discuss all about them in next class see you tata bye bye take care